Let's talk uh, assessments, okay? So every Bridges grade level has an assessment binder. Every grade level in Bridges has its own assessments binder, which includes an assessment overview. And in that overview are these six things. Standards and assessments. Standards are very important, as you know. Number two, assessing math content. Number three, assessing math practices. Number four, assessment as a learning opportunity. Number five, using the results to inform differentiation and intervention. And number six, reporting to the families. So let's talk about the units. So every unit has a summative assessment. Summative assessments test for mastery of core standards presented in that unit. Okay, so the question is kind of like what to grade. And these are some Bridges examples. So let me get out of the way so you can read it all. Practices to consider whole group lesson responses, collaborative conversations, lesson check-ins, exit tickets, workplace observations. I've highlighted weekly and unit assessments because those are super important. And then work samples. So those are practices to consider, but the exact location of those places when you look to the right, those are these are the examples from Bridges. So there's informal observations and sessions and number corner. And that's where you'll find those. There's structured observation, which is inside the workplaces. And there's work samples, which is the units. And work assessments, which can be pre and checkpoints and post assessments. I highlighted checkpoints and post assessments because those are the ones that we more want to use for grading. We don't want to use the pre assessments for grading because those are just kind of um, give you some information about what the students know as you're going into a unit, but we don't want to grade them on their first exposure to that information. So you would use the latter assessments for grading purposes. All right, and long range assessments, which are in number corner. And remember the number corner preloads information for the next month, and that's why it's long range. Can we talk math form here? I want you to think student voice. All right, math forms are when you are um, working with the students and you want to have that discussion moment with, you know, like whole class group. It can even be small group. You can have math forms in your daily rotations if you want. But math forms are super important because the students need to have the opportunity to discuss math, talk about it. And it doesn't have to be lengthy. You only need to pick a couple of problems, get in there, do a deeper dive with the class, and then get out and move on. So what is a math forum? It's an active learning time when students explain their solutions and strategies that they worked in previous session. The role of the class is to listen respectfully, ask questions, and learn from their classmates. Prior to the forum, the teacher pre-selects who will share. See how I highlighted that? The selection is designed to scaffold thinking around specific strategies and model that enhanced efficiency, flexibility, and accuracy. So it's a little bit of your differentiation there. All right, let's talk about an example of how to plan for a math forum. Ahead of time, you're going to do the following. Select one question from a session to have a forum on. So take out a highlighter and circle, let's say, number three. And this will be a visual for students and teachers to focus on just that problem. Number two, you're going to talk to your team to plan this together. That's your grade level team, by the way. And the next thing would be to categorize papers into different strategies by efficiency and commonalities. So this would allow the teacher to know what direction to go and be strategic about who could share a strategy based on observations. Next, let's take a look at the assessment map. All right, we're talking standards now. In the assessments binder, you will find an assessment map. 
which lists all of the common core standards to be taught at your grade level for the year. It shows what they are and when it will be taught in your teaching cycle. Very important to know where that's located because we are standards-based grading. All right, next we're going to talk about assessment goals. Let me get out of the way. Just give me a second. So your assessment goals are these. Number one, value the process of finding the answer at least as much as the answer itself. Number two, create an atmosphere in which it's okay to take risks and make mistakes. And number three, when appropriate, make a selection of tools available. Number four, give students time to share their observations, ideas, and strategies with one another. Number six, encourage students to be as precise as possible in their use of mathematical terms and labels. You might want to use your vocabulary cards here. Number six, help students clarify and justify their thinking with the questions you ask. Now remember, I'm going to give you a copy of this slide deck. You could actually print yourself a copy of this particular slide, put it up in your classroom as a reminder to yourself. Formative feedback that works. So feedback should cause thinking, not an emotional reaction. So these aren't things that, you know, like you're not going to grade it, you're not going to compare it. So you, what you really want to do is um, just kind of gathering data. It's observations. So here's some examples here, like teacher, you need to be more systematic in your writing. And the student is like, if I knew how to be more systematic, I would have been more systematic the first time, right? You need to be accurate in what you're asking of your students. So be helpful in your feedback. And not only just accurate, but be helpful in your feedback. Ask questions, give hints, provide scaffolds. Look, formative feedback is just what it says it is. It's formative. You are forming opinions. You are forming your data. You are gathering information. It is not the summative. It is not the final test. It is on the way towards the final test. So keep that in mind as you use formative assessments. Okay, now that we've taken a look at assessments, it is time for us to move on to the next video. See you in the next one.